but it's doing nothing for you. And personally, I hate beta alanine and I've had many pre-workouts get ruined because it has beta alanine in it. This is my dream, time to manifest it. Hey. I've been starving on my demon slay like anorexic. Why wow. you present? Stop with all the questions, time to teach a lesson. What is up team? This is Quinn Stilson with The Quan Coaching. Today talking all about beta alanine. You just heard from Derek, it's a pretty controversial subject. Is it actually going to increase your exercise capacity? Is it gonna increase your performance or is it really just gonna give you that tingly, itchy sensation that makes you wanna scratch your eyeballs out before your next bench press set. We're gonna talk all about that, but first, as always, we gotta talk about the mechanism of action of beta alanine to really understand how it works. So beta alanine is a non-essential amino acid, and it combines with another amino acid known as histidine to create carnosine. So carnosine is really the important thing that we're creating here, and what carnosine does is it's a muscle buffer, meaning that it neutralizes acid, if you remember from your high school science classes. So why is that important though? Why do we need a muscle buffer? Why do we need to neutralize acid within muscle cells? Well, this goes back to something you may have heard of called lactic acidosis. So let's talk about when lactic acidosis actually occurs. Well, this needs to be broken down first into three energy systems that produce energy for your body to exercise. If you are producing an exercise motion that you're gonna be able to do it for a long time, long duration, 10 plus minutes, lower intensity, the oxidative system can handle that. It produces ATP or energy in a slower manner, but it can do so for a longer period of time. However, if you are producing energy more rapidly, aka you're producing more intense exercise motion for a shorter duration, so less than 10 minutes, that's when you need to start producing energy or ATP through anaerobic or glycolytic pathways. What's important for us here is that when you produce energy or ATP through these anaerobic pathways, you start to build up protons, that H plus or acid. When you start to do this, you're also creating lactate as a product of this, this anaerobic metabolism. And by doing that, you're now creating a lactic acidosis. You're building up acid, you're building up lactate, you have lactic acidosis within the cells. So now we have this acidosis in the cell, in the muscle cell, what is that actually gonna do? Well, that actually is responsible for a feeling of fatigue in these intense exercises. It causes fatigue due to a couple reasons. One, it directly inhibits what they call the excitation contraction coupling process, or essentially how your neurons tell your muscles to contract. And also it inhibits further energy being produced. So this acid is not only directly acting on muscular contraction, it's also limiting more energy being produced. Thus that re results in that feeling of fatigue that you get, which causes you to stop the two minute run, or it causes you to not perform as well on that two minute run. So you can imagine that carnosine is going to be very helpful when you're performing exercises that cause this lactic acid buildup. It's going to neutralize the acid and thus allow your muscles to contract more efficiently, allow you to create more energy through these anaerobic pathways, and it's going to decrease your fatigue and improve your performance on exercises lasting less than 10 minutes, but also not super short in which the creatine or phosphagen energy system takes over. That energy system only works for exercises lasting less than 10 seconds. If you have an exercise lasting less than 10 minutes, your fatigue is more so going to be due to depleted ATP stores, or like we talked about with the creatine podcast, depleted creatine phosphate stores, which create more ATP in this very rapid manner. So really what you're looking at is beta alanine or carnosine, which is what beta alanine eventually produces, is going to be very beneficial, at least mechanistically, what we would think at least, is it's going to be very beneficial when you're performing exercises in that in-between duration, that 30 seconds to 10 minutes where we're getting a lot of energy from lactate production, from anaerobic pathways, which also happens to build up acid, which can be neutralized by higher carnosine levels. So exactly how though does beta alanine supplementation help with that? Well, when you supplement with beta alanine, it has been scientifically proven that you increase your carnosine levels, and thus you're increasing your muscle's ability to buffer that acid. 
Now this is an important point because it tells us how we actually need to dose beta alanine. That is to say that the total amount of beta alanine that you're getting is much more important than how much beta alanine you're taking at individual time points. This is very similar to creatine if you watch that podcast in which you take creatine in order to saturate your muscles with the creatine and thus then arrive at the effect. Same goes here for beta alanine. You take enough beta alanine to saturate the muscles or to at least increase the muscles concentration of carnosine thus you have that muscle buffering effect. So it's all about the total amount of beta alanine you're getting. If you take it before your workout, after your workout, throughout the day, it doesn't matter as long as you're getting the correct total amount. And the correct total amount has been very well demonstrated to be 3.2 to 6.4 grams per day. And then you can even take it at smaller doses throughout the day in order to inhibit the one adverse effect, which is that tingling. Now, that tingling is what we know, what we call in the medical community, paresthesias. And those paresthesias are only going to occur at higher doses. So if you're taking three grams or even six grams at one time, you might experience those paresthesias. However, if you're spreading it out throughout the day, maybe taking one gram four or five times a day, you're likely not going to experience those paresthesia, that tingling, that wanna scratch your legs off effect of beta alanine. And fortunately, if you are spreading your beta alanine dosing throughout the day, that you'll really experience no side effects then because really these paresthesias are the only known side effect of beta alanine, which is great as far as its safety profile is concerned. There, there have been many, many studies on beta alanine and none of them have demonstrated any adverse health outcomes. And then one more point to bring up before we talk about the scientific practical effects that have been shown in studies is special populations in which beta alanine supplementation might be good for. And that is for vegans and vegetarians. Beta alanine is actually found in meat and poultry. Thus, you can imagine if you're vegan and vegetarian, you're going to be getting even less beta alanine in your diet. Thus, beta alanine supplementation could be even more beneficial for these populations as they have more room to increase their carnosine concentrations above their baseline diet. That being said, even if you're not vegan and vegetarian, you can still increase your carnosine levels in your muscle by beta alanine supplementation. So that is mechanistically how it works. That's the dosing that you need, and that's the safety profile. Let's talk about if we're following all of those things. We're taking 3.2 to 6.4 grams per day over a chronic period. Let's talk about the actual benefits that we might see if we do that. First, in order to do that, let's look at a study titled Beta Alanine Supplementation to Improve Exercise Capacity and Performance, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. This was done in 2017, and it includes 40 studies that looked at 70 different exercises with over 1,400 total participants. So a huge study, this is really, really good for us to be able to determine, is beta alanine going to work for you specifically, for your goals, and for your type of training? There were four main conclusions to talk about from this study. The first main conclusion is that beta alanine was found to have a statistically significant effect for exercises lasting 30 seconds to 10 minutes. And right, this exactly fits with what we talked about expecting based on the science, right? We're looking for those exercises that are falling in that range of lactic acid production, thus carnosine can act to neutralize that and provide us with some benefit by staving off that fatigue. Next conclusion that this study drew was that exercises lasting less than 30 seconds and longer than 10 minutes clearly demonstrated no effect. So if you're going on the marathon or you're performing a one rep max bench press, you're not gonna see any benefit on those type of training with beta alanine supplementation. The third interesting conclusion is that beta alanine had less of an effect in trained individuals than it did in untrained individuals. This is likely because these trained individuals have actually been training their muscle buffering capacity when they go into the gym and provide a stimulus of an acidic load versus the untrained do not have that stimulus. They have, don't have that trained muscle buffering capacity. Thus, they have more room to improve with taking beta alanine to produce more carnosine. That being said, trained individuals also still have a proven effect with exercises lasting 30 seconds to 10 minutes. And the final conclusion to take from this study was that co-supplementation with sodium bicarb, which is another muscle buffer, actually improves 
muscle buffering capacity and improves the effect size when taking beta alanine. So essentially what this does is it just raises your muscle buffering capacity. You can neutralize more acid and even stave off the fatigue longer and perform better on those 30 second to 10 minute exercises. While this study was super beneficial, one thing to note is that not very many, if any of the 40 studies that were included actually looked at a resistance training protocol that a lot of you are probably performing in the gym. One that maybe is focused on hypertrophy that's working three to six sets six to 12 reps with 30 second rest in between the sets. Not a lot looked at that. The study was done in 2017. And since then there has been a couple of studies that did look at it with differing conclusions. So let's look at those. The first is titled effects of beta alanine supplementation during a five week strength training program, a randomized controlled study. Essentially what this study did was it took at week one, 40 second work intervals and then progressed the patients to 20 second work intervals. So again, this is around that time where we said 30 second work intervals are going to provide benefit. These protocols did 40 seconds to 20 seconds. So around that range, what they found was a successful benefit with an improved one rep max for lunges and squats, and also an improved power outcomes on these exercises as well due to beta alanine supplementation. Now on the other end of the spectrum, does beta alanine supplementation enhance adaptations to resistance training, a randomized placebo controlled double blind study. This concluded that there was no difference in one rep max for bench squat deadlift, and also no difference in muscle thickness when beta alanine was supplemented. These patients did a eight week resistance training protocol that was more similar to what you see most people doing in the gym, which is they're not having extended periods of time under tension. It's more 10 to 20 seconds of working set versus the 20 to 40 of the prior study. So I think these two studies taken in conjunction demonstrate that one, there does need to be more research done on resistance training and beta alanine supplementation, but two, that you're really only going to see a beta alanine benefit if you are working in those 20 second plus working sets, really getting the time under tension up and really focusing on those hypertrophy focused exercises. And then the final study to mention is one known as effects of beta alanine supplementation on body composition, a great assess systematic review and meta-analysis. It was done in 2022. And I find this interesting to mention because I know a lot of you are taking beta alanine supplementation with the end goal of hypertrophy or gaining muscle. What this study found was that looking at all the prior studies on beta alanine, there was no change in body composition throughout these studies. So all of that being said, we've looked at the mechanism, the dosing, the safety, we've looked at the practical benefits that the science has shown us. What are the final recs? Should you actually be taking beta alanine based on your goals? First, I'll start with me. So I'm a vegan or at least mostly plant-based. So I don't get a lot of beta alanine in my diet. Also, I work strength and hypertrophy mostly. I do include a lot of sets that are pushing that 20 to 30 second working set range. And also I do some high intensity interval training. All of those things taken in conjunction for me, I do supplement with beta alanine as I find it effective for those longer time under tension sets and as well as the high intensity interval training, which works 30 seconds to two minute work intervals. Now let's talk about you. First of all, if you're not taking creatine or caffeine, those are the first two supplements to reach for. They have much more proven benefit. And if you're not taking those, I would strongly recommend you take those before you reach for the beta alanine. If you already are taking creatine and caffeine, great. And you want to spend a little bit more money on supplements, you have a little bit more budget for it. Beta alanine may be good for you if you fall into one of these groups. One, you're a track athlete, you're training mostly 40, 400 meters or longer, really these events that are lasting 30 seconds or longer, you're gonna see a lot of benefit from beta alanine as the fatigue caused from these events is due to that acid buildup. Thus, you can stave that off by increasing your carnosine concentration and your muscle buffering capacity. You also would benefit if you're a field athlete who does sports that have longer intensity intervals. For instance, if you play soccer or you play basketball where the plays are longer, you could be running up the court, up and down the court a few times before getting a break, you could be fatigued due to this lactic acid production. Thus, 
carnosine and beta alanine would help. And you're also going to see benefit if you are focused on hypertrophy in the gym, so much so that you're increasing your working set range to 20 seconds plus. So what I would do is go to the gym, see how long your sets are. If your working set is lasting longer than 20 seconds, especially if it's lasting longer than 30 seconds, you're gonna see a benefit from beta alanine. That being said, I feel most people are not falling in that group. Most people are performing sets that last 10 to 15 seconds, at which point the ATP storage, the creatine, that's what's going to cause the fatigue. You really need to be focused more on getting that creatine supplementation and less focused on beta alanine if all of your sets fall less than 10 seconds especially. So who is beta alanine on that note not going to benefit? Well, it's not gonna benefit the marathon runner, the aerobic athlete. It's not gonna benefit them because the fatigue there is more so caused by a lack of glycogen. It's also not gonna benefit the athlete who's only focused on strength, the power lifter, the shot putter, the discus, the vertical jump, etc. Those things are not going to be benefited by beta alanine supplementation. So if you fall under those groups, I would recommend probably not taking beta alanine unless you also do some training that includes high intensity intervals or resistance training with working sets longer than 30 seconds. So that is the lowdown on beta alanine. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe for more content, more supplement reviews like this. And also please hit me up at thequancoaching.com for all of your coaching needs. If you want me to write you an annual periodized holistic program that's individualized to you, I can do that. I can also take on a few more online clients as well as some in-person clients in the Chicago area. All that information is at thequancoaching.com. With that, I will see you all next session.